Hello and welcome back to another Warframe video. So I'm seeing a lot of the same weapons being used um, in the last couple of weeks alone. I'm seeing a lot of MR10s to 20s just use um, uh, the same weapons over and over again. And like obviously there is a meta in this game. Um, there are things that come and go out of popularity. But there are a ton of weapons in this game and I feel like only the top 5% are being used 90% of the time. Um, there are a ton of hidden gems, um, there are also a ton of crap weapons and I guess it's up to the YouTubers and, and, and people people like putting content out for this game to highlight some of these weapons and I feel like I want to make my own, I want to make my own little um, few videos on like some of my favourite weapons that I think are hidden gems and people don't really use that often. Now. I'm seeing a ton of Kuva Brahmas, a, a ton of Kuva Nukors, um, Amprexes, Ignis Wraiths, a lot of wave clear weapons. You know, they are popular for a reason because they're really good. Um, but there are some weapons, obviously, that are only good with a Riven. Um, but I want to kind of find the weapons that you don't need a Riven for. But even if you do find a Riven, you know, that is glorious because, like, the Riven disposition is going to be giving you crazy, crazy stats. So today's video is on the Ninkondi Prime, and as you can see, I'm in a Steel Path level 140, and I'm actually shredding the absolute hell out of these Grenier. It is disgusting damage. Um, I really, really like this weapon, and there aren't that many nunchucks in the game. I think there is one stance mod and one for Conclave, and that, I mean that explains a lot because they are terribly hard to animate, I would assume. Uh, I'm not an animator, but I would not like to be animating the nun the nunchuck animations. Um, so there are yeah, so there are three three nunchucks in the game: the Shaku, the Ninkondi, and the Ninkondi Prime. So I this video is on Ninkondi Prime. Um, I don't think I even have had the Shaku, but um, I think no, actually I have I have done the Shaku. Um, but the Ninkondi Prime has a lot going for it, and it is a pretty disgusting weapon. And I also have a Riven mod for it. Um, I have two builds for you to sh uh, to show in this video, and one of them is without the Riven, obviously, because, I, like I said, I want to make um, a few a few weapons without Rivens, because, like, those weapons that are only good with Rivens aren't worth your time, because you need to get a Riven, and they're annoying to get. So I want to be able to make these accessible as hell to as many people as I can. So, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the build and the animations and all that stuff. Okay, so we are in the Simulcrum and I wanted to show you quickly how the stance mod works because that's basically what we're going we're gonna to be building for. So I'm going to put on screen now the Atlantis Vulcan uh, combos and there are two to highlight that I really, really like. The first one is the right click and a main attack. I'm sorry for console players, I don't know the, the buttons, but for me it's right click and attack, which is this. This is Searing Undertow. You treat this weapon a lot like a dagger. Um, it hits very like loads of times for very little. Um, it has okay range, but there you go. And the second one is Blazing Vortex. Now, I love this thing. It's so dumb because you're basically General Grievous. And it's so, so funny. Uh, so you hold forward and press uh, right click and attack, which is this. Now, this has a chance to hit 13 times when it's spinning. And you hit twice in a 360 arc when you... Uh, on the on the on the on the wind up before the uh, the big vortex thing. Now this scales of attack speed and it hits 13 times, like I said. So 13 times you're going to hit, you know, status effects and and various things, and it is absolutely disgusting. You can also build up a really nice combo. So the build that we've got going on for this is our non-riven build. Now I've gone for status because if we look at the base stats on this thing, we have a base status chance of 36%, which is huge. Um, we have like I said, River Disposition 3, uh, crit chance is 22%, and critical multiply 2.4. So the crit's okay, and you can build this a, a bunch of different ways, but for me, I really, really enjoy um, status for the non-Riven, and my Riven is built for crit. We have base uh, electricity, um, which means we can build corrosive and get a few corrosive procs, and or um, viral and, and something else. Uh, but this is the build that we've got going on. Uh, it's mainly stats, so we have a condition overload build with weeping wounds. Um, we have two dual stats. I've buffed the slash up a bit to, to get it to proc a bit more. So we have base slash, um, some impact, and mainly corrosive. Prime fever strike could be replaced with normal fever strike. And we have berserker because even though you're only hitting 22% chance to crit, that's still enough to get a crit off and you can get 75%, which is better than prime fury. 
Uh, prime pressure point, obviously, for 135% extra damage, while mine's 135. Obviously, I've not ranked this up. And uh, that's basically the build. Now, let me show you in what it does in action. So, we have 100 level 150 corrupted heavy gunners, the, st the standard. Now, this thing will start slow. And then on the second go round, you will see that it picks up and you can start melting things. So that's the first one. And that was one level 150. And I'm just winding into him. And he's absolutely just deleted. It is so disgusting on that on that uh, blazing vortex. Now let's uh, show you searing under two, which is the other one. So just lava them together, stand near them. And there you are. That's level 150, by the way. Uh, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So that's the non-riven build. And as you can see, uh, the weapon does absolutely fine. It is a disgusting weapon. Uh, now I'm going to show off and show off my riven. So I rolled on this. And it is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So the riven gives me 208% crit chance. So this is more of a crit chance build. So we have blood brush in here. We have weeping wounds um, for still status because... Base 36 with weeping wounds. When you get to that 12 times combo multiply, you're, you're going to be hitting over 100% crit uh, stats chance. Also, a blood rush. We're going to be hitting some solid, solid crits. Um, we also have uh, prime fever strike and shocking touch, which is a single stat element, but but that's fine because we have weeping wounds. We have organ shatter on here, berserker. Um, for obviously the crit chance, we're going to be proccing that way, way more often. And pressure point. So around 11, 12 times combo multiplier, we're going to be hitting red crits. Um, also, this this gives me 2.3 range, which which means I just have extra range, which is that's a fair amount of range for nunchucks. Let's be real, 4.59 range. Um, so yeah, this is the crit build. Now it starts off a bit slower than the other one. However, it once you hit that 12 times for combo multiplier, which is very easy. Obviously, if I have lava on Inneros, stand them all close together. I've killed these, so it's a bit slow. Uh, now I'm at 12 times in that tiny time frame. I'm just absolutely deleting these enemies with red crits and also 100% status as well. Yeah, it does a ton, a ton of damage. And I just really want to highlight this weapon to a bunch of people because obviously um, not everyone has got this or, will, or is currently using it because of the uh, river disposition. And that's basically what the nunchucks do. Um... I've proven them in the steel path, and I think that you will have a lot of fun with these. There is a ton of ways to build this thing. I, I mean, I did like a couple hours testing with this weapon, trying all different things out, you know, hybrid builds and crit and heavy attacks, but I feel like these two builds are the best way to go, um, especially if you find a decent crit ribbon for the Ninkondi. Uh, if you find like some status or elements, I mean, it just makes the, the, the condition overload build even better. But yeah, that's pretty much what the Ninkondi Prime do. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you again soon with another favorite weapon of mine. Peace. You fool!